So here we have the Picicle, ran by a Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, this kit came with all the resistors, LEDs, switches, buttons, capacitors, etc. Um, the only thing it didn't come with was the battery and the Raspberry Pi. Um, the, the, the battery was a little difficult to find, I just had to type in exactly what it said here in all of those numbers. So if you're looking for them, the specification, uh, the specifications of this is that it's four millimeters in diameter, which is the exact amount of space that is inside in between the PCB and the, uh, and the rest of the 3D printed case. So you do have to get a battery that is uh, four millimeters in width or less, otherwise it will not fit. I made the mistake and bought one that was six millimeters and it just, it wasn't gonna fit. So anyway, uh, the first step in that the, uh, so the, or I should start, the product comes from a uh, Tindy. It's uh, over, it's a website, sort of like Etsy, but for electronics and uh, sort of hacker designs and such. And um, the, the makers of this product are actually in Russia. They say they made it for their little sister or something or rather, you could see their whole description on the, on the website. But in the website, they have their, their uh, instructional sort of how to put this thing together, just the step-by-step -step process. This is a um, retro emulator, uh, sort of like a Game Boy Advance style has it's gonna have um the right trigger and left trigger buttons x x y a b um there is no analog uh there, there's none of the two analog toggle switches so games for like playstation and um any of those other games you, you know are gonna really work the best but the playstation one emulators they're still working out a lot of kinks for, uh, for the Raspberry Pis, so it's be best to sort of stick with anything before the PlayStation era and needing the uh, analog toggles. N64 games still work great. But our first step that uh, is in the uh, product description inside of their specifications and instructions is to solder all of your resistors. And right here, the, the mark is gonna be the mark that's on the resistor themselves. Or I think they're, yeah, yeah the, the, yeah, the resistor themselves. And then the value is what's printed on the PCB. So you sort of have to do a little translation. You're gonna need a loop, a uh, USB microscope that hooks up to your phone. I have a microscope here that I might, that I'm probably gonna use for a few different things at my workshop. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna do it by eye because even though it's hard to see the numbers and such, it's, uh, it's uh, still possible to solder it by hand. So, I think our first step is just to get to it. And by the way, I've never undertaken a project quite like this. So, there might be a few steps in which... I do it wrong. So I don't think so. It's not rocket science. It's pretty simple. The The idea, you know, you have your resistors and you line them up correctly. I, I'm about to look up and clarify that there's a positive and negative or if it matters and then how to tell. And if that's so, I'll explain that next. And, um, and then from there, we're just going to put this thing together. This I'm, I'm making this video sort of as a step-by-step -step process of somebody who has minimal experience in electronics but a lot of tactile experience I make I, I, I make jewelry and I, I, I build things all the time so something like this isn't beyond my grasp of understanding but it is something I've never technically done before but just to show anybody who has technical abilities can jump into the electronics world even if they've never done anything like this before now i've I, i'm hoping that this video serves as a, a sort of a reference point you know for some people to to you know maybe feel a little more comfortable 
undertaking something like this. So um, I will be right back with you about those resistors. Verify that these little resistors um, are polar, so they, they work both ways. So, I mean, I'm going to solder them all so that the, the numbers are oriented correctly. But uh, in the case of this first one, the number is 101, so, and it's centered on there pretty well. So, there's not really a way to tell with this one which side is left or right, per se. Um, but from what I just, from what I just did a little, and most of this stuff you can just do a quick Google search on, and there's a lot of information on, so it was really easy for me to find out if, uh, you know, the, if the orientation of these resistors mattered. So, see you when we start soldering. of our resistors soldered not too hard there's a little bit of the cover that came off there but that's okay that doesn't matter um and then there was three of them on the back side one two and three so now that we've got the resistors on next we have the capacitors and some of these are polar and I realized I was using the wrong terminology these uh, resistors are non-polar meaning they it doesn't matter their orientation whereas some of these which are color-coded you need to pay attention to that um, are non-polar meaning they have a positive and negative side um, I believe they're pretty thoroughly marked on here, the ones that have positive, and yeah, so like that 10UF, that is a capacitor that is non-polar, and so you'll have to orient that one, you have to orient that one, the other ones I don't believe are, are non-polar, I think they are polar, so... Yeah, let's uh, get to that. So, <clears throat> with these capacitors, the 10 UF, the it's pretty clearly marked in the chart here that the uh, side that has this little dark slash is the positive side so that's how they're oriented all of the polar capacitors on and so i just got to clarify the polar i think i just flipped it around the polar capacitors are the ones that matter the orientation because they have a positive and a negative side whereas the non-polar ones doesn't matter it also doesn't matter which way they're flipped over so as long as only one terminal is touching one side or the other that's all that matters so let's get all the non-polar capacitors on.
we have the LEDs, red, green, blue, one, two, three, essentially the same thing as the resistors and capacitors, they are polar, so their orientation does matter. All right. Alright, and so next we have the chips and tran transistors. And those here all have their mark on the chips themselves and then the value that's uh, here on the board here. I think it's on this side. Yeah. So, that'll be next. All right, so we have all of <laughs> resistors, capacitors, transistors, and LEDs soldered on. So, um, the next step is the switches, USB, volume toggle, on off, uh, various things like that, and. Yeah, let's begin. On the TP4056 transistor, there's actually a pad on the underside that needs to be soldered down. And the only way you can do that is through this hole on the other side. Now it's just through hole soldering, and just to make sure I do it, and I don't feel like changing the head out of my solder tip from the flat head, I'm, I just put a tiny little piece of solder in there Gonna dab a little flux on there. And we are going to apply heat down in. And hold it there for a second. And I think I'm still going to have to change the tip. So, yeah, you want to use a skinny tip so that it can fit down into that hole. All right. Figure we update. We have all the switches, buttons, toggles, mini USB, resistor. I, I'm not going to go over it again. Uh, we have everything attached except for the Raspberry Pi, um, the speaker, the battery, in the screen, a couple other things, but all the tiny shit's done. So, there we are. Okay. Let's give a little, another little update. So, I didn't do a, I forgot to do a time lapse of attaching a few of the uh, Raspberry Pi and um, a couple other things. Um, I had trouble putting the speaker on and I kind of just gave up way too quick on it. Figured I'd work out some of these other kinks before I work on the speaker. Um, so, we have it plugged in right now, charging. Um, also, I just wanted to test the LEDs, but, uh, not just with the multimeter. Um, right now, everything is attached. We have the screen, still has the protector on so that I don't smudge it up. Raspberry Pi, soldered on. Battery, soldered on. The uh, USB pin, I broke off several times. <laughs> and while, while testing it, I, I also forgot, I need to clean the flux off this board. Um... 
but yeah, that was that's a that was a fiasco. Another story for another time. But uh, right now, when I turn it on, um, the blue light blinks for for just a split second, and then it turns off, or, or not turns off, but just doesn't respond. So I don't know what's going on. I gotta figure out if it's because maybe some of the resistors or capacitors aren't soldered on correctly or something was not soldered correctly and that's why it won't turn on but um yeah i gotta tinker with it for a bit so see you guys here in a bit thanks the screen wasn't turning on when the light was when i was flipping it on um the uh the pins in the back that actually connected to the PCB weren't fully connected, so I soldered those all the way through. And also, I uh, went through all the GPIO pins and made sure those were all soldered down. There was actually two additional um, solder points right here on the on the USB or on the micro USB port. I think for the power that weren't soldered as well. So now it turns on, but. Is not loading the operating system, the RetroPie operating system, which I reflashed to make sure onto that SD card. I might, I, I, I got to figure that out. So that's where I'm at right now. We'll see it when I figure that out. And then we'll move on to finishing the rest of the build on the case because there's still all the buttons that need to be filed away and got to get the uv glue to glue the front case onto this there's a couple of things left to do hardware wise but i want to figure out the software bit now that the thing turns on i want to make sure i can at least get the operating system to load and that way once everything's built i can just work on getting the roms loaded on so but yep that's where we're at also i noticed when you turn it off um, it takes a second to power down fully. It's a little weird. It'll start to turn off here in just a second. You'll see the green light flicker, the blue light dance, the screen sort of flicker out and then go off. So, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be or if I might have, again, soldered some capacitors or resistors incorrectly and so it's powering down. Weird. But, um, for now... I'm uh I'm gonna work out that software issue. So see you next time. Well everyone, I have hit a wall. Probably due to my lack of experience in this field. As I said, this is the first time I've done something like this. Um when I turn it on, uh it just goes to this white screen. I haven't taken the sticker off that yet. Um yeah, I'm not sure if the blue light is supposed to be on and stay on, but it seems to, like, come on in intermittently. Um, I did uh, use my multimeter here to test through all the GPIO pins, and um, I marked some of the ones. I, I since washed off with the alcohol, but um, I had marked some of the ones that when the power was on, it wasn't getting the three volts. Um, and I resoldered them. Um, and only one of them seemed to get voltage again. So I'm not sure, because I know that the PCB does not use all of the GPIO, all 40 of the GPIO pins. Um, so some of them I know don't quite matter, but I, I need to find a schematic. Again. I don't think it's included in the uh, online, online directory. I'm gonna have to check again, but basically it won't work. Um, I've plugged in an HDMI, a mini HDMI into that, hooked it up to my TV, and the software was running, so the, there's nothing wrong with the Raspberry Pi, as, as that unit goes, it, it's running the software, I could play it on my television if I wanted, but we're trying to get it to run on this, so if anyone has any ideas, uh, please let me know, feel free, leave a comment, or send me a message, or... What have you. But until then, until I figure something else out, this will be the first video. Thanks. Well, hopefully we'll be making number two soon. All right. Bye.